Hello, this is Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Out of the Blue Comes Francis Zhu Show.、Um, this week, I have Emily Alexander with me in the studio. Is you? Hi, Emily. Hi, Francis. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, pleasure. Well, yeah, I we were talking a little bit before.、Um, Before recording this episode, and miracles、um, come strongly to mind as a topic. And when I look at Emily's life, I really see that is a big miracle unfolding just endlessly from the moment I met her. And of course, before that, she has a lot of、um, miracles that. Led her to this to that moment where we met. But I met Emily, I believe, in twenty twelve, twenty twelve in Ireland. That was the first time. Yeah, twenty twelve or twenty thirteen, but around that time. Yeah, yeah. And then the next time was probably very soon after, a few months after, we did、um, a weekend. Long weekend retreat in England, and that's where Emily came again. And I remember very distinctly、um, in the middle of the retreat, I heard all these participants. They were talking. One of the participants、um, is going to quit her postgraduate、um, certificate, or like it's. It's almost like she is in the middle of this two-year pro- program in psychology, and this this participant felt so inspired, and she is so ready for the next step of her life that she's going to quit this program that she's half she's halfway in right after that weekend. And I remember hearing people talking about at the dining room, and I'm like, who is this? Grow, and it turned out to be you, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, I just remember that you came to our strawberry festival, and then went to Australia and hosted a three-week silent retreat where I was there. So we had a very close collaboration for that three-week time. It was very, very deep, and it was very healing. And、uh, yeah, it's also a very joyful collaboration between us. Then afterwards, the next time I I saw you,、um, you came to Mallorca. We had a six week devo- devotional stay, and you were facilitating, were overseeing the the logistics of the whole six week retreat. And then that's where your life just like one step after the next, one leap after the next, and.、Um, Right now, you you're in Mallorca, Spain, leading one of our community centers. But the interesting thing is with you, Emily. I always remember、um, the f- maybe the first retreat in England. You asked a question、um, in the middle of the gathering. You said, "I think maybe you already made up your mind to quit your psychology program," and you asked. You said. I feel so inspired right now, and I'm inspired to take a a leap of faith in my life. But I, I don't really know after this weekend what would happen. Like it's all good and beautiful right now. After this weekend, I would just go back, and what would I do? And I remember at the time when you asked that question, this movie. Tango just came so close,、uh, clearly to my mind. So I remember I said something to you、um, in the line that if you go toward that lantern, which is a scene in the movie. If you haven't seen that movie, I really highly recommend it. 
um, if you just go toward that lantern, you will never come back. It's a one-way road. It's, it's, it's once you step forward to, to that direction, your life will never be the same. This question is irrelevant. I, there, that's exactly what I see unfolded. And then in Mallorca, you came to Mallorca for six weeks and you were going to go back to Australia at the time. That was your plan. And, and you're like, okay, I feel so expanded, but I don't know after these six weeks where my life would go. And the same movie came to mind after many years. And I said the exact same thing. And then when I was saying that, I thought, why well, didn't I say this before to you? But it's almost like the spirit was just saying, this is how your life going to look like. You go one step forward and everything is washed completely behind you and that's exactly what i see happening mm. wow it's beautiful francis yeah i just like i actually feel all this emotion <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I feel like you're reminding me of all the miracles. <laughs> it's like when you were talking, I, I had this thought, it's like, wow, my, my whole life's a miracle. <laughs> and um, it's like, that's like, it's in that moment, it was like, that's all there's ever been or something. So it's so beautiful just to hear you share about it and your perspective, like all condensed down to all of these, these major things that happened. And yeah, I remember that, um, that retreat that I went to with, with you and David and a few others from the community and I feel like that weekend was really life-changing for me um, because before that I had, um, yeah, I had been pursuing a career as a, as an opera singer and, and I felt like I was, I had kind of given everything to it. And I think there was something deep in my heart that I was looking for. And the closest thing I could find was the experience I had while singing. So it ended up being like this search, this, this, I think in the end, it turned into like this desperate search for, for some kind of meaning. And, um, but that was never it. I feel like that was never the spirit's plan for me. And it got to the point where all the doors seemed to be closing and, um, and I just actually felt very blocked with my voice. So I remember there was one day where I just decided I have to go in another direction. I have to, I have to let this go. And I went from like my whole life being about singing to no singing at all. And I think that that was a good few months before I went to that retreat with, um, with you and David and Living Miracles. And I remember before I came, I had like some resistance. I had a, I'd paid for the retreat and I would paid for my flight and some fear came up like, I didn't want to go anymore. And only that I had invested all of this money in it. I, I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'll just go. I don't really have anything to lose. And something happened on the first night in the first session where I just like cracked open and I had all of this emotion and, and the whole weekend was just more and more of that, like this like huge, huge heart opening. And I don't know if it was the second or the third morning I woke up and something in me had to sing like it had been months of like no singing at all. And, but something in me felt so strong that I, all I wanted to do was sing. And I remember I, I was walking down the stairs and I bumped into David and I said, David, can I just go into the room where we're going to have the gathering and, and sing before? And he said, yeah, of course. And I remember going down and I was like, I sang like everything that was in my mind, everything I knew. And then mm. David asked me to sing during the gathering as well. And, and I just, it was like something ignited in me, like something opened up that had been closed down and and that, yeah, I remember 
just leaving that retreat with my heart cracked open and I was in the airport and I wrote to David and I just said, whatever this experience was that I had, I want more of it. And I didn't really know anything about Living Miracles at the time. I didn't know anything about the community. I had just found David a few months beforehand, but I, I knew I wanted more of what I experienced. And that's when David invited me to come to Strawberry and come to Utah for, for two months and come to Strawberry. And even though he only invited me for two months, I knew, I was never so certain of anything in my life as the experience. <sighs> that I had that weekend and and I went home and I I sold everything I owned and I like packed up my life something in me knew I wasn't coming back. And I, I never went back. It was like, there's been a few trips here and there, but yeah, that was seven or eight years ago now. And, and I feel like even though, you know, this path can feel intense and there's been a lot of healing, I don't feel like that certainty has ever gone anywhere. Like mm -hmm. it was just like some kind of knowing that this was my path. And I was so grateful to yeah, to have found it and to find, have found David and the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You are you ha you were trained um, as a professional opera singer, and I think you were sent even by your family to to learn opera in Italy for probably a couple of years until you feel okay. I I feel blocked up because there was such a a pressure underneath to achieve. The, su the success that you were looking for in music, in, you know, in singing and something really, you know, closed down in you that you couldn't really sing anymore. And then you somehow, I heard that your friend um, introduced you to this psychology program and, and that really laid the foundation for the course and David's teachings to come in. But then after you came to the community, yeah, you started to sing again, but with a, de a very different purpose because it's not to achieve any professional standard. I really like how you described it in the England retreat that when your heart is wide open, all you wanted to do was just to sing everything on your, on your mind. And I also even remember with you know, the, the silent retreat that we had in Australia, that was a, a basically three weeks of very strict silence. And the only other thing that is happening is singing every morning that we come together very early in the morning. Before the retreat started, a team of us came before the retreat and we started to make music based on course lessons. And it was such a fun time to jam, to sing. And then we made like a bunch of chanting. And then we sing every morning with the whole group. It was just so deep and reverent. And then we closed a whole silent retreat with a concert. Everybody sing and read poetry. It was just, that's what I see the fruit of the miracle is, is this freedom to just express, express this love and this feeling that we feel is so connected with each other and so connected to God. And we want to let this, this feeling to be expressed out. And I think that's what you have um, used your singing voice and your skills for ever since you, you came to this path. Yeah, because I think like, what happened before was I, I got too fixated on the form and, um, and like, yeah, like an, like an outcome of the singing or what other people would think or, and I, it's like, I, I lost touch with something with it. And so when I, when I came into the community, it was funny because there kept being all of these opportunities, whether it was to sing or collaborate with music or, you know, lead choirs or people wanted singing lessons. It was like coming from every angle. And initially I was actually 
quite resistant. I felt like, no, I'm, I'm done with that. You know, I, um, I'm not interested in that anymore, but I can see now looking back that the spirit was like, no, there's still something that has to be healed there. And, and I want to use your voice. I want to, I want you to have a different experience of it. So I feel like over the years, I've opened up more and more to, and actually seen when these things have come towards me, that there's a healing for me in it and, and to, to go towards it. And, um, and now really focusing so much on the experience and that connection with the spirit and that that's everything it's like if that's not there then I can't sing but it's like that's it, the the voice now is used as kind of like an inroads to that rather than it being a nice song or singing well it's like a whole different whole mm-hmm. different purpose but it's been an undoing because it was so ingrained that that mm-hmm. way of of operating yeah I really see that everything that we have accumulated even um, in this world can be used by the spirit to, of course, to heal our own mind and to bless absolutely everyone in our perception as well. Because I I know that you were sent to lead the Spain Center um, early 2019 when we first got the center. And it was such uh, a mission because in Mallorca, Spain, um, you and a team of others, nobody spoke English. I mean, nobody spoke Spanish. <laughs> and then uh, you have to deal with the government and everything. And, and they all speak Spanish and they don't speak any English. So I, I remember actually I went, I went with you into the government, maybe it's tax office one day. And you were having this dialogue with, with the um, the official, and I was like, "What? How can you understand?" Because I could not understand a word. But you were like having a full on dialogue, not really much um, speaking from your end, but it seems like you can understand absolutely everything she says. So I said, "How are you doing this?" And you said, "Because I understand Italian." That that is from the two years that you were learning opera in Italy. And Italian and Spanish are very similar. So even even that was actually used for your current function, you know, for the center to bless, to bless a lot of people. So that's just, I I really see that in absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so miraculous. And with the singing as well, you know, I know that you have, you know, this this push pull relationship with the singing because you have such an experience. If if you ever went back to that perspective that I want to sing well, then you shut down straight away. Mm. So even even over the past years, you still are trying to find this place inside where. It is truly an uh, expression and extension instead of trying to achieve something. And I, I know that you, you sang in um, our mystery school in 2017, and we were shooting the documentary film, Take Me Home, at the same time. So we shot you singing Nella Fantasia, this beautiful, um, you know, is a, would you say is an opera? Yeah, an aria. Yeah. Okay, that is from, um, I guess it's from the movie, The Mission. And then I remember when I was editing the movie, I said, I don't, it's a very, very, um, it's a long shot to include that in the movie because there is no way we can get the copyright for that song. And you also told me how difficult it is for the composer um Mariconi to give the right because Sarah Bretman, I think, wanted to wanted to uh, put lyrics to his music, and he said no for five years. Is that right? Yeah, I I remember hearing something about that, but I had a different experience even with. Well, the, the reason I said that was because when we when you said there's maybe a chance that we would want to put it in the movie. 
I found out who the um, record label was and I wrote to them just to inquire what would be the possibility. And they wrote back and they said, um, we can check with the composer, but I just want to let you know it's extremely unlikely because the composer is quite difficult <laughs> and doesn't really give rights to anybody. And, um, and when I wrote, I actually um, wrote a whole letter about, like, for me, the healing with the song and the whole context and what it was being used in. And I think within a day, it was so quick, I got an answer back saying that they had contacted the composer and he had agreed for us to be able to use it. So it was like this total miracle. It was the odds were so unlikely. And then it came back immediately. No, there's green lights the whole way. <laughs> yeah, because I read the email that you wrote to the composer. It was very transparent. And I know that you put in an email that you were trained as an opera, opera singer, but now, you know, the singing is really like a tool for healing now. And that's where you give your life into, to healing, to forgiveness. And and that somehow really spoke to, to the composer. You know, he wrote back within 24 hours, like, yes, absolute yes. Mm -hmm. So that was very miraculous. And that's really truly how I see um, everything is used by the spirit to, for us to really witness the miracles, you know. It's almost like there, we are being carried in transi transition into a real world. And we leave behind this, this dark world behind, this lonely and um, isolated, depressed place, which is actually not an actual place, but it's the way we see the world. And then in transition is this happy dream world where suddenly everything feels like a fairy tale. We're not alone anymore. We are carried by the spirit and everything we say yes to turn into a miracle that is unfolding in front of our eyes. And that's exactly what I see you know, that's the benefit of for me to to live in the community because I do see how people's life change and unfold as a gigantic miracle. And you're you're definitely one of the 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 people that I see. Wow. Every time I think of Emily, I actually think of Rapunzel in <laughs> in Tangled. Because that's exactly how it feels. You know, you just you, you take one little step and you have no idea where this was going to lead, except that you just feel a heart opening, that there is a yearning, there's a longing, and you, you step forward and boom, another world showed up. And you step forward, boom, another realm showed up. Things and possibilities that never existed um, in the past perception. But that is exactly how perception trans is transformed through forgiveness and through following the guidance. Um, that is exactly how it works. So even I do see that the spirit is so loving and is providing every opportunity for us to, to tap into the miracles and actually also to let go of um, any obstacles that 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 don't serve us anymore so this journey indeed is a journey of forgiveness which means that everything that we believe we we hold firmly in our mind will be forgiven will be forgiven and and then so it does take um facing the darkness it does take this journey of going inward and yeah there's a lot there will be a lot of emotions coming up and i know that yet every step that's provided for you is like an answer to what you're facing or what you have to face in your mind 
So you're never left alone in facing the darkness. Yeah, I, I really see that. It's like, it's actually amazing just having this call with you and speaking about it because it's like, it's like I'm seeing this whole holistic perception of all of these years and that maybe in a way that I, I hadn't seen it before because like when when I met you and David and everyone, you know, that was such a transformation for me. But previous to that, I was in a lot of darkness, like like really kind of down on my knees. And um, but I see now like that the spirit was answering me. It was answering me with what I really wanted in my heart, but I, I didn't know what that was. It was like, it just seemed like doors were closing over and over and over. But when I did finally come to that retreat, I didn't feel like I was holding on to anything from the past that I still wanted. It was like, it all felt so futile that it was actually so easy for me to take that step, like that inspiration. I felt that heart opening. It was so enormous. And it was like there was nothing conflicting against it or something. And I I have seen like that happen over and over, you know, on, on this journey. It's like it seems like, OK, something's being let go of. But then something bigger comes in to like pull you through and. I feel like even with this center in Majorca coming in, it was it was kind of the same thing because what, just before it came in, um, I was letting go of of a marriage, and that was a, a a very intense time for me. And just like yeah, just facing like a like a lot of emotions and and disorientation, and it was like. Yeah, I remember I was in Mexico at the time and and then the center in New York came in in this like miraculous way. But one day I was with David and he said to me, well, we actually feel for you to go and set up the center and and to lead it. And he said, uh, so if you choose to accept, it offers enormous potential for expansion. And I remember just something leapt in me as like, yes to enormous potential for expansion it wasn't really about the place or the the form of it but I could feel like this invitation from the spirit there's a huge opportunity here do you want it and it was like like yes like it wasn't even a real question or something it was like there was no other there was no other like option and um and so when I came here like I was still going through a, a, like a very deep letting go process, but I was, uh, I could just see that the spirit was giving me this to whatever the, the hole that I perceived was with this, the lack that I perceived within me. He was giving me an opportunity to fill that up in a real way. And so like when we first landed here, there was so much to do and people were sent from all over the world. Like I was just thinking back on it today, like the first six months we were full. And so there were all of these people here and, and every day we had like these collaborations with all of the projects and everything. And then like so many calls for love, like in whatever, in whatever form. And I had so many opportunities to meet those calls for love. And it was like, I remember having this awareness one day that I was so grateful that so much was being asked of me because I really in a deep way acknowledged or experienced that if I, it's the only way I could receive. I was mm. being asked, of, I was like, thank you for asking so much of me. Like, thank mm. you. Because I was giving so much and it was like I could feel my heart opening up more and more so so I yeah just looking back I can see how that was an answer to a prayer that was that was like a way of of starting to recognize that what I was searching for or what I thought was missing was actually within me and the only way that I could really experience it was to give it away. And I had to have so many opportunities. And I was given so many opportunities and continue 
to be given so many opportunities to to give because it's the only way I can experience that that love within. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. That that is exactly how I feel as well. Over the years, it's like we we can't really receive the blessings from the spirit and hold it to an individual self, and that is the way that this world or the ego is in a way um, expecting the gift or the blessing to be received is I ask a blessing for myself. I ask a healing for myself. I ask a direction for myself, but from the spirit's perspective, you're not the so-called yourself as you think. And you can never receive anything unless you extend it as well. You're never able to receive something unless it's received for the whole, unless it is received for the whole sonship, because you are the whole sonship. So it's like if if we're asking a blessing or direction or a question, and it is for an individual life, and then you know, it's only for me, it's, it's never the case. So when we, re, we, when we ask for healing, this healing is extended to everyone. And then if we're willing for ourselves to be used in that way, then, the, then we will see that is the case, you know? And that is exactly, you know, how I feel too, this journey truly directed the mind to be more asking for how can I serve? How can I give? How can I forgive so that I can learn forgiveness? How can I teach forgiveness so I can learn forgiveness? How can I um, answer a call for love so that I can my call for love can be answered? And that is, that is exactly how it feels when I actually perceive a call for love outside of me and I was asked to offer something you know I actually received the spirit's blessing in that same uh, process and then I witnessed the spirit that's how I got healed so so that is truly a blessing that this this um, opportunity and this role that that were given you know to seemingly overseeing a center, which, you know, even though I know that on the surface, it's all about logistics, it's all about counseling, it's all about handling things. But deep down, in essence, it is a spirit's lesson being learned that when I give, I receive, and I'm never give to myself. So, yes, yeah, very, very deep. Yeah, like I, I just, I think I saw so many times that when I would seemingly be going through something and, and I would have an idea of even what I thought it was or what the upset was or what the cause was, that it never worked if I just tried to just be with it myself or, yeah, like even like yeah, pray about it or read the course. But if if I really thought it was something very specific and I was looking on my own for the answers, like I wouldn't find the relief or the release. And time and time again, just by me going towards what was given, which for me was and is this center to the relationships here, to the seemingly mundane daily things, whatever they may be, I would be lifted above the battleground. And, you know, maybe I wouldn't get a specific answer to what I, I thought the problem was, but the problem would dissolve. It was like, it was, it was no longer there. And I was just given these experiences over and over to see that it's like, no, it's in the extension. It's be, giving myself over being used was always going to be, the solution and that was really really powerful for me actually yeah and it's also such an experience that's exactly how the spirit teaches um, and how we learn it has to be through experience for example 
you were given this this enormous next step, which is to come to a, a brand new place, um, to a place that you don't speak the language, and and then set up a whole center and welcome people from all over the world to come to the Center for Healing. But that is the next step that offered after you, you let go of a marriage and you're going through this inner healing of loss. And, you know, of course, the way that we think is if we feel loss, the way to heal it is to uh, get the partner back <laughs> or like have have that person to fulfill this hole inside but but it is so clear to me that when you're going through this believing loss in mind the spirit immediately offers a solution which doesn't seem like relevant in any way and yet in you saying yes to that step and in giving yourself to answer the call for love that he sent to you, you know, the loss is gone. The loss is healed. And the, the whatever perceived to be lacking is fulfilled from inside. It's from, from you, you know, you, you realize you have it but you see it through extending it, you have it. So that is such an experience to learn that you cannot lose the ones you love. Jesus says that is actually the most, um, I can't remember the word that he used, almost like a, the most ridiculous belief of all that you can lose the ones you love because that is still assuming that a person um, is able to fulfill something and without this person, there will be a loss, like almost like a loss is tied to the world and is not tied to how we feel inside and, and our relationship with the spirit. But yeah, I just see that this kind of assignment is given you to, to learn that. And yet you're teaching it at the same time because as you learn in your mind and feel more and more happy, everything that sent your way is for you to teach that there is no loss and we can count on the spirit, we can count on guidance. So it's like you, you don't just heal for yourself. You don't just receive the next step for yourself. This next step is for you and for the whole sonship. Hmm. That's exactly how it works. Hmm. Yeah, I, I really saw that because I I just, I started having these experiences where I was falling in love with everyone. Like it was like this deep intimacy, but it wasn't, wasn't necessarily specific to a certain person. It was like with everyone, it was like, it was the healing that was happening was, was the intimacy and and I witnessed that whatever I was experiencing or whatever was happening for me, I, I saw it in everybody else. It was like, it was a shared experience. It wasn't, yeah, I feel everybody was here for me, but somehow we were all there for each other. But yeah, you can't really experience it for yourself and not see it in everybody else too, because it's like, it's all connected. So that was mm -hmm. kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. And I, I do see that, um, yeah, I, at the level of form, things are constantly shifting and changing, but that's also the way that the spirit is, is using all kinds of symbols to help us lo um, lose the attachment to any particular symbol and any particular meaning to try to hold on to one thing that worked in the past to keep fulfilling um, something. So, you know, in a way that I feel enormously grateful for the fact how fast paced our lives are, you know, it, it's, it's fast paced is, is constantly shifting at the level of form, but internally the 
dependence on the spirit and God is just become more and more strengthened. Mm. It's it's kind of like you know the experience with the singing because when we were talking about it before, I was thinking that's the same lesson with everything. Like it kind of started off with the singing. Like I had this old purpose for the singing, and it felt so bad. Mm -hmm. And and yet the spirit was giving me a new purpose that was like this deep feeling of connection and intimacy, and and then the singing would flow from that. But I see the center here as the same. It's like finding finding what's real and and just letting every action kind of be an outpouring of that. So it's kind of like this this thread that goes through everything. We're looking for what's real, no matter what exactly. the form is. Exactly. That is very a good ex- description of the experience, like looking for what's real and find out nothing is real at the level of form, no matter how good they look like. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Just finding the spirit in every moment, like that's the only mm-hmm. thing that's going to sustain. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's beautiful, Emily. Well, I'm so grateful for this opportunity <laughs> to talk with you and yeah, just to be reminded of how miraculous our life is once we just lean back and hold hands with the spirit to carry us. So thank you for being a demonstration. Oh, thank you, Francis. And yeah, just thank you for this opportunity because I, yeah, I feel like I'm being reminded of it all again. And that's very, very inspiring. So thank mm, you so much. That's true. And thank you everyone for joining Emily and I. I'll see you next week. <laughs>